Few people realize that London's River Thames receives around 40 million tons of untreated sewage every year. Each storm turns the city's iconic waterway into an open sewer, shocking tourists, threatening wildlife, and embarrassing a global capital that prides itself on progress. The problem was not neglect, but growth. London's sewers, laid out in the Victorian era, were once the envy of the world. Yet, a system designed for a 19th century city could not cope with the realities of a modern megacity. By the early 2000s, storm overflows were discharging into the Thames almost every week, polluting the river, killing fish, and sparking legal action from environmental regulators. The solution had to match the scale of the crisis. Engineers proposed a vast new interceptor tunnel running beneath the capital, able to capture storm surges, store millions of cubic meters, and ferry flows to treatment works downstream. Conceived as both a civil engineering marvel and an environmental necessity, this super sewer would become the largest upgrade to London's wastewater system in 150 years. That vision has just become reality, with the tunnel now fully operational in 2025 and transforming the way London protects its river. Today, let's delve into London's $6 billion Thames Tideway Tunnel Mega Project. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The origins of the Thames Tideway Tunnel stretch back to Victorian London. By the mid 19th century, the River Thames had become an open sewer with raw waste flowing directly into the water. In the summer of 1858, the infamous Great Stink overwhelmed Parliament, forcing urgent action. The answer was Sir Joseph Bazalgette's revolutionary sewer system, more than 1,800 kilometers of street sewers feeding giant interceptors along the Thames, reinforced by grand embankments that reshaped the city's riverfront. Completed in the 1860s, this network rid London of cholera and set the foundation for a modern metropolis. For more than a century, this sewer network served London well, but by the late 20th century, its limits were exposed. Designed for 2 million people, it now struggled with a population nearing 9 million people. Urbanization replaced green spaces with concrete, reducing natural drainage. Because the system carried both wastewater and stormwater, heavy rain overwhelmed the pipes, and overflow points discharged directly into the Thames. These combined sewer overflows were spilling weekly by the early 2000s, releasing up to 40 million tons of polluted water annually. The river's ecology suffered, rowers and boaters recoiled, and regulators demanded action. Thames Water, the UK's largest water utility, faced mounting pressure under European directives. To secure a lasting solution, the UK government and Thames Water established a new infrastructure provider in the early 21st century. From this partnership emerged the Thames Tideway Tunnel, an ambitious megaproject to safeguard London's river for the century ahead. The Thames Tideway Tunnel is extraordinary both in size and ambition. Running 25 kilometers from Acton in West London to Abbey Mills in the east, it parallels the Thames under some of the capital's most historic and densely built areas. Its diameter, 7.2 meters, wide enough to fit a London double-decker bus, makes it one of Europe's largest wastewater tunnels. Depth varies from about 30 meters in the west to around 70 meters in the east, ensuring a steady hydraulic gradient and avoiding surface disruption. The tunnel's purpose is straightforward but powerful. Intercept sewage from the city's most polluting overflow points before it enters the Thames. In total, 34 combined sewer overflows are connected via shafts and smaller linked tunnels. When heavy rain overwhelms the existing system, instead of spilling into the river, the flow is diverted into the tideway tunnel. The tunnel can hold up to 1.6 million cubic meters of water, equivalent to nearly 600 Olympic swimming pools. Once storm pressure subsides and treatment capacity becomes available, the flows are pumped eastwards through the Lee Tunnel to Becton Sewage Treatment Works, Europe's largest sewage treatment facility. Beyond its core function, the Thames Tideway Tunnel also delivers a visible legacy on the riverfront. Cofferdams used for shaft construction are transformed into new public spaces, 
most notably the Bazalgette Embankment at Blackfriars, the first new Riverside Embankment in 150 years. Delivering the Thames Tideway Tunnel was a civil engineering achievement, comparable to Bazalgette's 19th century sewers. The vast project was divided into three main sections, west, central, and east, each managed by a separate consortium so multiple tunnel boring machines could work at once. Tunnel boring machines were lowered into launch shafts up to 30 meters wide and 60 meters deep. Once activated, these machines cut through the London clay formation, as well as layers of chalk and gravel, installing precast concrete segments to line the tunnel as they advanced. The precision required was extraordinary. A deviation of just a few centimeters could cause misalignment with downstream sections. Above ground, settlement monitoring arrays safeguarded historic buildings and the underground network. Construction was not limited to tunneling. At each of the 21 connection sites, massive shafts had to be sunk, often in tight foreshore or inner city locations. Chambers Wharf in Bermondsey required one of the largest cofferdams in modern London built in the Thames itself to allow safe excavation below river level without flooding. Spoil removal became a logistical triumph. Instead of clogging London's roads with lorries, conveyor belts, and barges worked with the tides. At peak, 150 barges a week carried material downriver, cutting an estimated 600 truck journeys daily. Over 98% of the 7 million tons of excavated spoil was transported this way, much of it reused to create habitats at Rainham Marshes. Tunneling concluded in 2022, after which attention turned to commissioning. Sites were linked, valves tested, and flows gradually diverted. In 2024, the wall to the Lee Tunnel was broken through, and by early 2025, the entire system was operational capturing sewage during storms as intended. The Tideway Tunnel's financial journey proved as complex as its engineering. Early estimates put construction at $4.8 billion, plus $1.4 billion for preparatory works. But COVID-19 disruptions added around $300 million. Final costs are now placed between $5.7 and $6.3 billion. To deliver such a vast sum, the government approved a novel model. Instead of Thames Water financing the project directly, a special purpose company, Bazaljet Tunnel Limited, trading as Tideway, was established as a regulated infrastructure provider. Backed by investors such as Allianz and Dalmore Capital, it erased private finance at low cost thanks to a government risk support package. Thames Water customers ultimately contribute through a 20 to 30 pound annual surcharge on bills spread over decades. The official inauguration of the tunnel took place in May 2025, attended by King Charles III, a fitting conclusion to nearly a decade of construction and a century and a half after Bazalgette's original triumph. A megaproject of this scale inevitably drew criticism. Cost escalation was a recurring theme with opponents pointing to the $5.7 to $6.3 billion bill ultimately passed to households already facing high utility costs. Executive pay fueled controversy when Tideway's CEO received a £600,000 raise in 2025, despite cost overruns, reinforcing concerns over profit versus public interest. Engineering posed challenges too. Tunneling beneath heritage buildings, the underground, and dense districts was complex. While construction disrupted riverside communities, COVID-19 added delays and safety hurdles. Environmental campaigners questioned whether greener surface-level drainage systems could replace the tunnel, though engineers argued London's density made a deep interceptor essential. The debate highlighted a paradox. Mega projects are costly and contentious, yet often the only viable solution. The benefits of the Thames Tideway Tunnel are already clear. Its greatest impact is environmental, capturing around 95% of sewage that once entered the Thames and reducing overflows to just a few days per year, even during heavy storms. Early operations showed it storing hundreds of thousands of cubic meters in a single rainfall event. 
flows that previously devastated the river's ecology. Cleaner water now supports fish, improves safety for rowers and boaters, and lowers public health risks, giving the Thames a chance to recover as a healthy urban river. The project also delivers civic and cultural gains. Seven foreshore sites have been transformed into public spaces, including the Bazaljet Embankment. Ventilation columns inscribed with poetry highlight how infrastructure can enrich culture. Economically, it has created thousands of jobs and apprenticeships, while barge transport of spoil reduced emissions and created new habitats. Importantly, the tunnel strengthens London's resilience against climate-driven storms. The Thames Tideway Tunnel represents London's commitment to protecting its river and investing in infrastructure for future generations. It is designed to endure for more than a century, shielding Londoners from pollution and safeguarding the Thames as the city's defining natural feature. Though costly and controversial, the alternative, allowing millions of tons of sewage to enter the river annually, was untenable. By completing the tunnel, London has future-proofed its wastewater system restored the river's health, and created new public spaces that will long outlast the disruption of construction. Looking ahead, the tunnel will require careful upkeep and could be enhanced by surface-level sustainable drainage. Climate change may test its capacity, yet it provides vital resilience. Ultimately, the super sewer embodies the paradox of megaprojects, expensive and complex, but transformative when realized. What are your thoughts on this megaproject? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.